December 8, 1905. It is of old rumours that these mountains are haunted by the presence of an amorphous, squatting horror. One which rolls atop the crests of the snowy peaks, piping noisily on its fruit in lonesome dawn hours. Dismiss what I am about to tell you. Label me a madman if you like. Regardless of your decision, certain infallible facts remain, including the widespread witnesses to the musical pipings, the singular burnt trails of the winter fields, and the noxious odour which permeates every morning from a top sun crest, and the photographs. I know it has found me at last. After 30 years of running, save only for the downtime between countries upon the seas in chartered vessels, a certain realisation has finally ended my goal of never ceasing locomotion. Age, it seems, has caught up with me. I'm confined here in the village of Providence. It is Yuletide, at which the ancient fishers here respect. I'm not fit to run any farther. Every morning I awake to the bothersome, haunting cries and the musical patterns from that baying of immemorial years. It grows closer and closer. What is it that fate will bring? The fields were green and the air was warm when I first settled here, but now... Jeremiah, was it? Hello and welcome. My name is Dorian Kahn, the High Priest of Providence. In regards to the request you had about this curse of yours, I'm afraid there is no help here for you. A being of tremendous power such as you described cannot be swayed or even destroyed. It must accomplish the goal it was born with. I have seen it atop Suncrest every morning, playing feeble notes on a cracked flute before rolling back into the caves. I do not know what that musical pattern means to you, but it must have significance. I can offer you shelter here, if you wish to stay, but that is all. There is a vacant house up on Raven Hill, detached from the rest of Providence. Wake up! Albert! Wake up! Are you home? 
Are you drunk again? Damn. Fine. I'll find a way into your shed without you and take what I need. The shovel should still be inside. grave robin but it should prove useful to me in the task ahead thank you old friend The door looks weak enough to be broken down with enough force. I'll look for a heavy object, a barrel or a crate, something to use. Welcome back, Jeremiah. You asked me a week ago to interpret the actions of the being, and after arduous study between a number of voluminous occult tomes in my library, a recognizable pattern of its behavior was found. This being is born of a curse, Jeremiah, of the most powerful kind, usually in regards to a murder, a betrayal, or tampering with elder things. There is no way to dispel or remove it. It does not kill. It only follows you. The song of which you have heard for three decades has some significance to you. But you profess you don't remember, and I do believe you. This beckoning call is merely for you to follow it and meet with it. It has never wanted to kill you outright, Jeremiah, or else you would already be dead. I recommend meeting it and facing your past. Dismiss, Jeremiah. I have other works to attend to.
The gate is locked. Perhaps one of the nearby houses will have a key. I needn't disrupt the prayer. It would be best if I left the village out of my affairs. Just who was it that cursed me with this? Who summoned this demon out of the black vault to haunt me forever? Was it Dorian? Spectre? It could have been ages in Africa, Somalia, in India. I cannot remember. I, I do not know. If only I had a way to ascend to that lever. I could lower the bridge. Come in, Jeremiah. Ah, well, there are other places that can provide shelter if you wish to leave Providence. The Sultan Anzo in India is renowned for his warding charms against curses. 
Within Iceland, there is a village of Nordic priests, the party of which excels at spiritual transcending if you wish to tamper with such pagan theories. There is Newport as well. Grey is one of the most powerful sorcerers and occultists of our time, but news of his sanity and health are poor these days. Or you can stay here in Providence. Retire in peace. Accept your fate. Which do you choose? Sit down, Jeremiah. Now, my reserve of advice and archaic knowledge is exhausted, and I am fully spent on analysis of any possible solutions for you. This creature is never going to stop following you, and there is no way to lift the curse. You can continue to live a hermit, running day by day from it, or you can go to where it beckons you, and face your past. To descend downwards into the aperture and face that being is the only choice I have left.
Christ nom sa Christ pro agus Christi mo Christ Christ nom sa Christ pro agus Christi mo Christ nom sa